So we wanted to call this meeting, and Keith and Wayne, correct me if I'm wrong, we want to talk about uh, basically the, the, the town's contribution to the water mer merger project, correct? More or less, the, and the logistics. Okay. The logistics in terms of the scheduling or who's doing what or that, that types of things or what you need? Correct. Just, you know, so everybody, you know, especially on my end, I, you know, I can plan things, schedule things, no, again, knowing what what's expected from the town, the highway department, equipment-wise, labor-wise, things of that nature. Okay. Um, what do you think, Wayne? Um, In terms of timing and stuff. Oh. Huh. Well, it's, when we met with, at yesterday's, the water meeting, Lucy and Mark were able to attend. And if I understood them right, it was, they change. Now it changed to two, two pump skid units, each of them having three pumps, three, what was it, George? 300 and something gallon a minute pumps for the fire side of it, and then three 30 something a gallon a minute pumps for the domestic side. So now that's, she did email Doug back yesterday about the changes now because now they got to reapprove the changes. So I have hopefully maybe by the end of next week, they'll, I don't see why they wouldn't approve the changes, but we'll get word from them that they approve them. Then finally, I don't know how long it'll take her, maybe another week or two, maybe before it can go out to bids. But even when it, you know what I mean? We can't, I would say, and Keith, you'd probably agree, and George, you agree, until, until we get the bids back for the skid unit, skid unit or skid units, we really can't do anything not knowing where the pipe's got to come in and the pipe's got to go out. True. I, I agree. We That that will define a lot of everything. everything. Yeah, kind of where everything's going to sit. This time, so, this, this time it's different because one of the pipes comes up in the middle of the building and the other one is toward the edge. So like Wayne says, until we figure out which skid we're going to use, there's not much you could do. You could go up there and clear the site, the trees and that, and maybe scrape off the loam if it's not frozen. But other than that, there's not much you can do. No, because I mean, that's, and that's going off Armstrong pumps will be the low bidder. You know what I mean? Webs or, or Blake, you know what I mean? Just use them as an example. They could put a bid in, become low bidder, and it's kind of a totally different system. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how she's going to spec it out. The only good thing is Armstrong, last time they bid, they were the low bidders. And it came right, in which at, you, a, at a good price. Yeah, you think they would be because they've been the ones working with the engineers all along. But Brian, if we can justify why we wouldn't accept the low bidder, we're not bound to the low bidder, are we? Um, no, we're not. We just need to be able to justify that. Right. So if you guys like the Armstrong better than whatever the other system is, just justify why and you accept a, a, a higher bid, you know, as long as the higher bid isn't millions of dollars more and where the town's going to have a heart attack. Yeah, I mean, they were, I can't remember the exact numbers, but the first, not those pumps, but the pumps were down here when that, when we got the bids on that the last time, they were, I want to say 
they're probably pretty close to twenty, fifteen or twenty thousand dollars less than anybody else. So no one's going to come in a lot less than they than than they did. So if, and I, by a lot, I don't think so. Right, by a lot, and if they do by a little, we can justify why we wouldn't pick the lowest bidder. The good thing is Armstrong is right in Connecticut. And I think one of the other bidders that was the lowest one was in Florida, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, in Florida. <laughs> but if you're if their specifications are written so that the from the skid unit, for instance, the inlet and the outlet are in the same location, and we specify where those gotta be, then theoretically, no matter who builds the thing, it would fit and and bolt in right but do you yeah i mean if you put like you want the inlet pipe say here and the outlet pipe there do you i don't know this is kind of first time i've been through this would you narrow the bidding down too much that way you know what i mean you well, that's you part of the bidding. That, you tell yeah, that's them part that's of the bidding process But if things move along like she thinks they're going to move along, we should, you know, have it out to bid within two weeks, I would hope. Yeah. Because basically, big, basically the, it hasn't changed much. It's just that the five skid didn't work out. Yeah. They're just, I mean, I don't see why the DEP would take long to approve it because you're actually adding one more pump than what they approved the last time. So there's actually another backup pump. <laughs> What's the lead time? Four weeks, six uh, weeks? Um, when it was, Do you remember? When it was the, when it was at the five pump skin unit, when I talked to that pump guy, that was probably maybe back in January or December. <clears throat> I think it was three to four months. Three to four months. Months. It was like 12 or 16 weeks. But like we said, as long as we know, you know, we, we know where it's coming from and they can give us the specs on it. I mean, as long as we have the dimensions, then you kind of know where everything's got to go. Right. So we're not getting. So let's say. So if it's three months, it's it's almost. Well, it's going to be March soon. So March, April, May. So we wouldn't see it till. Probably June, July. June or July. Say, unless I don't know. Unless something miraculous happens, maybe you'd see it in May. So in terms of, I, I mean, in terms of timing, the, the timing for site work, what are you thinking? Assuming, so right now, um, did Berkshire Design uh, finalize the easement plan? Have you seen the final one? No. I got sent Finalized the easement. Yeah, that one, the one she's been sending back and forth to me and you and then she was asking that question about overlaying the new easement or that. And then town council gave her an answer. Right. Have we seen so a, we, think, we haven't seen a final I, one yet. No, no. Okay. So I'll ask her about that because I know she was waiting. When I, I knew the last thing I knew, she was waiting to hear our answer on that. And then she wanted to send the surveyors out there to, I don't know if they wanted to pound stakes in the ground or not. And do we know if they have, I mean, the other aspect that we need to talk about is permitting. With? With uh, our, <laughs> our town boards. Well, permitting with our town boards. Like planning board, zoning? Like, yeah, we, we, we should get a decision from Jim Hawkins what it requires. 
I, I emailed him. I got to get, <clears throat> I have to get an architect drawn plan for the building. Yeah. So I was waiting on which I was waiting on because we were waiting on these damn pumps, waiting on the final design of, I guess you'd call it the pump unit, the skid units. And I guess now I actually, I have that. I could actually go to an architect and have them draw up a set of plans finally. Yeah. Do you know if he's going to require us to get a special permit? Uh, it wouldn't be the building that, that requires a special permit. It would be how we're going to use the land. Uh, if we need to get a special permit, that's, you know, that's a month, month and a half process before we, we can even start on the site. I, I have no idea. <laughs> okay. So that's something we, I, that, that'd be something good to find out. Cause if it's going to require us to get a special permit, we, we need to get Berkshire design on the, on board and. So I'm, what am I asking them for exactly? We need, we need a special a, permit for the use of the building. If we need a special permit for, he knows he knows the project. Just ask him if we need a special permit for the project. All right. Or site plan approval, any of those. Because that's about a month, month. That's a month, two month process. It's All right. definitely a unique situation because we're looking to build, the town is looking to build a building on property that we technically don't own. We only have an easement. <laughs> right. Well, don't we also have to um, pull trench um, trench uh, permits? That's a fairly short process. Yeah, that's yeah I'm just saying, it, you, know, you know, yeah. It's the building that's going to be a permanent structure above ground that has to meet the zoning bylaws. Right. Mm -hmm. What about uh, any luck with getting in touch with Verizon about the poles? No, not yet. That'll take that'll take six time. months. <laughs> we all know the, the 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 drama involved with that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't. I talked to somebody there. Yeah, I talked to somebody there, and I don't know. They couldn't give me an answer if I actually needed an electrician to apply for these things, or if we could do it. So I might just call an electrician up and have them apply for putting two poles or replacing one pole that they say they have to and putting the other one. Yeah. Well, again, that's an example of why we need to, that might be the, 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 the biggest uh, time sensitive issue. So the next thing is the borrowing. Um, I mean, I, Lynn has her financial consultant that she uses queued up uh, to borrow the money. So we just need to figure out, I mean, so the relevant, the reason why that's important is because the payment is going to be due 12 months from whenever we borrow essentially. Um, so if the idea is to, to, to collect hookup fees within that 12 month period and pay it off within that 12 month period, then, then we need to figure out when you want to borrow. Um, but you also need, yeah, we also need money in hand to award contracts. So All right. uh, maybe we borrow around the same time. I think it's when said it'll probably take around two weeks. We could borrow around the same time that we put the the RFP out for the uh, um, for the skid unit. That probably makes the most sense. Yeah, Brian, how many people do we anticipate are going to um, apply for hardship? Well, that's the question. I don't know that the water commissioners are on board with that with any type of hardship program. I thought that's what we agreed to a couple of years ago on this. I can't speak for the water commissioners. 
I think they we, had a meeting yesterday and they were not in favor of it. Well, and there was a mechanism in place. I forget what that heart, what our plan looked like, but there was a mechanism in place on, on hardship so that we weren't eating the money. It was, I forget what it was off the top of my head, but, but, but that was something that the, that the water district was, was, was central. It was for them, it was central to this whole original discussion. I, I know the water district is hoping to give money back. The water district is hoping when they dissolve, they're going to disperse whatever cash they have left. And, and I thought that cash was partially available to subsidize hardship applications. Wouldn't that be between the water district and the people up there, not the water commissioners? Well, you know, from, from the perspective of, I think everybody should jump into the pool together always. Um, because otherwise you're in a position where you've got to borrow more than the, the, you've got to borrow more than, than the exact math for the hookups because you should anticipate that some people will not pay. And I'm hard pressed to believe that anyone's going to want to shut off somebody's water or not do the hookup because they financially can't afford to do it, especially in the era of COVID when, when times are tough for a variety of reasons, completely outside of people's control. So not only is it that these people don't have a lot of money to begin with, but you know, it's just another case where COVID hits the people who can least afford to be hit much more than it can afford to, to hit the people who, who, who can weather mm -hmm. the storm. So if you don't make that plan, that contingency ahead of time, you have to ask the town for more money than the, than the exact math because you'll, you'll have people who can't, who can't do it. And that was the whole purpose behind the hardship application. So you, uh, how many you people do you anticipate that won't be able to pay for it? Well, I'm sorry, say that again, George. How many people do you anticipate that won't be able to pay for it? That was my question before. Um, I, I think that isn't that something the water district should go around and talk to each people, each person, and say who who is has hardship. Well, I think that I I, I thought again. The the plan originally was to to use a pre-existing formula to, to determine hardship. So it's not a, a, a direct conversation that can be, that for some will be quite embarrassing and you want to avoid that. So we were going to use a similar formula that we use, I mean, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but we were going to use a formula that they use for um, free and reduced school lunch programs, et cetera, to better understand who can afford and who really can't afford. But I don't think any of us want to put people in the position of them saying, I, I, I need economic assistance. It was all going to be done very anonymously. And again, this is something we talked about two years ago. I think, I think when we had talked about it, we were, we were at least, at least at the concept level, we were looking at like the emer you know, something like the emergency rental assistance program that we've talked about recently, like, like there's income guidelines. Right. Um, but I don't know that we ever got beyond that conversation. And and, and I don't think they can do it anonymously because we're they're gonna have to, it's gonna have to be a if it happens, it's gonna have to be assigned to a water bill or or an address. So yeah, no, I don't I don't mean anonymously in that sense. I I mean I, I mean so that you you don't have one person on a street going up to another person on the street and having a conversation about it, that there are mechanisms set up and, and it's being done by people who know how to handle uh, economically distressed families and, and understand what they're going through. And, and, I, and I'm sure that's what we, what we had all talked about because it, it was a part of the, 
the, the, the discussion around what would be used with the, with the excess money that the water district was going to have. And, you know, and, and, and George, you're right to some extent that the water district has to, I just don't know what the final outcome was between the water district and the water commission in terms of what the water commission is expecting from the water district in yeah, terms of, of, of that, the, the assets on their, on their, on their, um, on their um, financial forms. What would yeah, happen just, if we, you know, obviously payments of this money are going to go to the town treasurer. What would happen if um, the, in, the residents or everybody in that district gets notified and you pick a date, say July, August, sometime during this upcoming calendar year where if residents can't make their payment of the $5,000 that they contact the town treasurer and that way it can be maybe a little bit more private and not, and then when you see just how many, if there are any, if there are none, everybody has sort of had a couple of years now to start hopefully putting a little bit of that money away in anticipation of this happening. It's not like it's a blind side for them. Maybe we won't have any problems, but if we do, Lynn can handle it on an individual basis somehow. I think so. I think if you start advertising that you've got all this money for hardship, you're going to have a lot of people applying for it. Whereas like Keith says, you know, we'll cross it one bridge at a time. As people come to the conclusion they can't make the payment, then we'll try to make some type of arrangement. Well, right. But I mean, they can't just claim it and, and, and get it automatically. Obviously, there is a formula that will be in place. Um, and it's not going to be subjected to very objective criteria, um, such as the, the rental assistance program that, that, that Brian talked about. I mean, again, I, I guess I, I'm admittedly a little frustrated because I, I, I this was a conversation two years ago that I thought we'd all settled on. And, and it just makes it harder because of COVID. And if anyone can tell me that not one family in Whitley has been adversely affected by COVID economically, then I'll fall out of my chair. And, and the COVID wasn't something we could plan for, obviously. You know, I know we talked about that two years ago, but I don't think any, any follow-up was done on it. And I think you brought that up, Jonathan, at the meeting that we were at. Yeah, and, 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 and it's why it was a conversation about what the district was going to do with their assets. Um, they that, that there was money in their account. Again, I don't know what it was earmarked for, but I thought the conversation was around, and again, it's two years ago, so I, I'm, 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 I'm scrambling for memory, but I thought the conversation was then around the what the commission was expecting from the district in terms of assets um and if the commission is going to look for some of those assets to go into the enterprise fund then it makes it more difficult for the district to help subsidize families in need you know so, their yeah their plan is when it's how you put it when it's all done their systems disconnected and the town's now supplying the center they'll sell off the any assets they have left and then whatever they have for money they plan on whatever if there's 40 hookups and they have twenty thousand dollars in their account then they're going to give every one of them people a five hundred dollar check or a thousand dollar check, whatever it is, yeah. they can't do anything, right, Brian? Until I don't know. That was one of them. I remember that conversation. They can't do anything till a certain point, right? Till they stop operating, right? Right. Stop operating, but they have to do it before they become nothing, right? <laughs> we, it, it happens as part of the dissolution process. Yeah, they were going to 
they were going to they were going to divide the remaining assets, which will essentially be cash among their among their members. Yeah. So you kind of offset the cost of. And I don't want to say hookup fee because that gets everybody going, but the connection fee or whatever you want to call it. It, it was. Yeah. And I thought the, the figure was around a that was thrown out was around a thousand, but I'm not sure. Yeah. A thousand what per, per household? Yeah. yeah. To go back. Well, and, and again, I, if, if that's the way it's going to work, then the town is going to have to go find money somewhere for those instances where people cannot afford the hookup fee. And my, my memory is that there needed to be a little bit of both. The, the town, if the town felt that the district was, and again, I'm not going to get into the us versus them because that's, that's destructive. But if, if the town felt that, that it feels that the district is doing as much as they can or, or helping out those people who can't afford it. And, and the guess was, I think, two or three families. It's not a tremendous number of families at most. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> then the town would help cover the remainder of those subsidy costs across, across, the, across the entire town um, so that no one was going that without water. Again, because some of this, yes, it, the water merger is a forced march. I mean, there's no, you don't have a choice. If you don't have any money, you don't have a choice that you, you're not going to go with this merger. So, you know, it, again, I think everyone has to play well in the sandbox together. The district, and, and again, I'm frustrated because this was, this was discussed. And I thought we'd come to a resolution that the district would come up with some money and the town would subsidize the 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 costs of the remainder again, assuming that it's that it's two or three families. And I know there are a couple families up there that have, as my dad used to put it, they don't have two dimes to rub together. And shame on us if we're not willing to help them in in in, in something that that we have decided to do as a town. Not their choice. They didn't decide to go to Bermuda. You know, and, and we're certainly not going to shut off anybody's water. As a water commissioner, I'm not going to shut off anybody's water. But exactly when it, when it comes to when it comes to that point and they can't pay, then we'll have to make some type of an arrangement, either with the town or with the water district, with the money that they have. But we're not going to shut off anybody's water. It, it, exactly. And I understand that, George. That's why I'm saying that we need to plan accordingly, because if we don't plan accordingly, if the district distribute and, and plan ahead of time if the district distributes all their all the money equitably across all 40 hookups that they that they already have and if the town hasn't gone to town meeting for this contingency cost then we're going to be scrambling and we're going to look like we didn't plan accordingly and, and that's what we're trying to avoid is that is that these conversations need to happen now and we need to have a system in place that this is what we are going to do, and we're going to have a, a, a schedule and a calendar schedule in place of when each step has to take place. And again, I thought it was done two years ago, but it's got to happen now because otherwise, we're going to get caught with our collective pants down. Is there? I got a question. Is there a possibility that the district, if if we just use that rough number, we're thinking a thousand dollars per user, and there's what forty something customers, so potentially they, they're going to disperse $40,000 when it's all said and done. Could they use that money themselves and as a district vote amongst each other and help those that can't come up with the 5,000 and work that out amongst themselves so that when it comes, you know what I'm saying? They handle it internally. Yeah. And Keith, I think that again, based upon my memory, I think that's what was going to happen but there was also the discussion of the, the district shouldn't be responsible for subsidizing the entirety of individual hardship cases. And that it, it, they, they, they can subsidize part of it, but then across the town, it would be evenly spread out, regardless of whether you're on the, the, the 
the water department hook up um, geography or not. So it would be a combination of the district helping district members and the town filling that gap so that everyone's in this together. And, you know, and I know as someone who doesn't benefit from the, from the water department at all, I, I have no problem with that. I think that's great. I, I want to see people work together and find compromise and common ground. It, it, it can't be this finger pointing stuff because that's what we were trying to avoid two years ago. I think that the timing of the district coming into cash from the sale of the land is going to be after the water department is going to want to collect its money. Because they're not going to sell the land until essentially that's going to be one of their last steps. So I don't know what their cash situation is now. Uh, I imagine it's, I, I think at last what, maybe they had around 10 grand, Wayne. I, I don't even remember. This was a while ago. And I, I don't I just, know. It's, yeah, it's, they were going to reimburse people. It was essentially good. They were essentially thinking about a reimbursement. Yeah, I think it's like, I don't have it right in front of me, but it's like 20, maybe 20, just shy, just over 20 now. So uh, it, if they elected to, they could pre whatever. Again, yeah, this, pre. This was a conversation that we already had. And, and, and I'm, and as I talk about it, I'm sure it was, they, they would certainly elect to help out a portion of any hardship, but they were hoping that the town would cover that difference. And I don't know whether they meant the town or the, or, or the, or the commission or what, but it would be a joint effort to help that unknown number of residents who had hardship. And again, it's two or three, so we're not talking a tremendous amount of money. And they have to demonstrate. They can't just say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm broke these days. They've got to demonstrate through, again, the rental assistance uh, formula that, that's used or some understood and, and commonly accepted formula that exists for hardship cases. And if you, if you meet the criterion, you meet the criterion. If you don't, you don't. I think that's something that the town has got to do, not the water commissioners. We're in the business to distribute water, not to finance people. And right now, the two pump skids that uh, have to go in the pump house now is going to raise the price up another $20,000 because originally the five skid was right around $30,000. Plus, we have another skid to go in the pump house to get water up there. So... The water department doesn't have a lot of money right now. Right. It, so, George, if 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 the town and I agree with you, the town needs to do it. It's not, it's not the it's not the department, but the department might need to be comfortable with delaying the final billing of the hookups for these. For, again, this is why we need to do this now. People need to apply now so that so that we can go to town meeting and ask for money that we need. The district can plan accordingly with, the, with their proceeds and the department is comfortable with a, a, a delay in hookup fees for this small number of families that are gonna be looking for assistance. We're all in it together. And, that mean, and, and what I just described is everyone has skin in the game but the only but there's no monetary skin in the game for the for the water department other than a delay in 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 in, in fee payment. Is there any minutes left from the meeting that we had two years ago to see what the discussion actually was? The merger minutes? No, the minutes that uh, when we sat in the uh, selectman's room. I remember sitting there and Jonathan bringing this out. Yeah, we did. I'm sure. <laughs> Not sure I'm who sure. was take, taking I'm the minutes sure. that time. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure there's minutes somewhere. We can't just throw them away. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's a bigger problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Brian, can Amy dig up the minutes from these conversations? Maybe. I think it was a joint meeting. So I think it was select board finance and uh, water commissioners. I think you're right. I, I'm and sure they exist wrong. somewhere. I don't know how detailed they are, but. Well, at least they, they, they serve as a foundation. And what I'm going to suggest is the minute that these, whatever minutes exist are found, we need to meet sooner rather than later that same group to, you know, the, 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 the district, the department, finance and select board to finalize this agreement because, you know, I, I think we're crazy not to ask for a little bit more money than we, than we need to because we need, we need to, to have contingency. Uh, and then it just goes back to the town budget if, if it's not utilized. Um, but we've all got to be on the same page before this work starts to happen. And, and again, I'm, I'm sorry that I thought it, it was already in place and, and I'm wrong. And so now I want to, I, I want to create a, 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 a meeting system that, that finalizes this and we put it in writing and everyone, and everyone agrees to it. So how many people do you think that would be in hardship? I'm guessing two or three, George. Again, I don't know yeah, when. exactly, but I know that when I had a conversation, it was probably with Nicholas, and I think it was yeah. in this meeting that that it, we're all referring to. That that was his estimate that it was it was two or three. Yeah, so he then, went way back. He went house to house or put the word out or whatever, and when it all came back, he figured two or three. That's why. I mean, I've actually been. Since this all started, we figured, right, Brian, didn't I, with all the numbers and the budget stuff I've been doing, I've been, I was figuring on two or three weren't going to be able to pay right away. So when we apply for the loan, couldn't we get an extra $20,000 just to cover these people and then make arrangements for payments? Well, you, just to make you wouldn't, clear? right, but you wouldn't need to borrow the extra twenty thousand dollars it's somebody would need to cover the extra twenty thousand yeah i mean the project if the project costs two hundred thousand you don't need to borrow two hundred and twenty because four people can't pay right it's just instead of collecting the two hundred thousand dollars you're now only going to collect say 180 so somebody's got to cover the other 20. Right. It just the, the final 20 using that as their our, our hypothetical number that may be delayed. Because right. again, so it's, to, to everyone's point, the district won't have the cash, whatever the cash they ultimately are going to put towards the subsidy the subsidy, they won't have that cash until everything is said and done. So we could probably get the town's portion, assuming my my solution is something that people are comfortable with. And, you know, I don't know whether that's gonna happen, but the department could get the town's portion because that would be a, a, a July 1st dollar amount that would be available. But then the remainder of, of anything the district was gonna put, put out would have to be paid to the department post their dissolution. Seems like we need to contact, you know, have the select board work with maybe with Lynn, make a determination of what type of criteria or what um, method of hardship is going to be accepted. And then let the district come forward with who is going to need that. And then that way you'll have a, a rough number, whether it's four hookups, three hookups, two hookups, and maybe you could have a, an article at town meeting to set that money aside until those people make payment or something like that. Yeah, and I, I, you're right, Keith, but I think it also needs to be a, we need to reconvene a meeting of the four groups, finance, select board, district, and okay. department to make sure that, that we're all in agreement because clearly the, our, our collective memories are not, understandably, they're not what, what they need to be to make sure to, and we can't decide this, This the, the five of us sitting here can't, wave our wand and say this is what's going to happen how does that sound brian well i i think you know the question is 
what it comes down to is that at the end of 12 months, whatever amount we borrow, which is going to be around somewhere around $200,000, needs to get paid. Um, so if we collect 180000 we need to know where that other twenty is coming from. Right. So it's either coming from. So who's going to front? Uh, assuming we're going to assume we're going to do that, and I, I think it would be wise to plan for something like that. Is that's going to come from pay? water department retained earnings, which it sounds like that's not supported by the commissioner by the water commissioners. If that's going to come from free cash, if that's going to come from stabilization. Okay. So, so that's one piece of it is where is that money going to come from to cover the difference? The other part of it is how do we get that? Or so, so the question I had before is when, when we talk about assistance program, I mean, are we talking extended payment plans or are we talking about some type of grant um, where we don't get the money back? I mean, the extended payment plan would be fine um, if we front the money from stabilization and, and we don't reborrow. Obviously, there's no interest. It's it's an opportunity cost for the town that we don't that we don't um, you know get that small amount invested for whatever that return is. But um, th those are really the two things we need to figure out. Right. I I agree 100, percent and that's why I want to have this. A, a, a meeting of those four groups as soon as possible to iron this out because it, it is going to have to be a town meeting article, um, this scenario that, that's being laid out. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I do like the idea of you, you set up a payment plan and, you know, it's, you know, maybe something has to change in software, but I, I know you can, you, can, you can bill extra in, 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 in water bills Towns across the country do it for for a variety of different initiatives, not potentially not even related to water sometimes. Um, so, I, I do like that it's not a straight grant, but it is a a, a payment plan that is set up, and, and maybe that the the difference maybe the difference goes back to the town. I don't know what the district would say about whether they get made whole or not or their members get made whole or not. Um, but that's a conversation that the four groups would, would have to have to have. Anybody? Yeah, I think I, I think in terms of I don't think the dis the district is not the district's not planning on transferring or giving any money directly to the town. Um, Whatever they have left, they're going to give directly to their members. So, well, I, I get that, but again, this is why the district needs to be involved in the conversation because I think that if, if again, my scenario, the, you know, what we talked about over the past twenty minutes is laid out, the district probably would have to give some of that money in an escrow account or something to help defer the costs of so that so that the town is not on the hook for let's use four hookups just for easy math so that the town is not on the on the hook for the entire 20,000 but they're on the hook for some number south of 20,000 and that number is based upon what the district is willing to use from their assets to help with the the the, the cost of, of helping people in financial hardship. I think I think if we told Nicholas that he would say that that's something new. Well, I mean, I can have a conversation with Nicholas, and 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 because I don't think that that is something new. I think that's what we we fully discussed. But you know, if the if the district doesn't want to do X and the commission doesn't want to do Y. <laughs> Then, it, then it's left to the select board and the finance committee to, to figure this out by ourselves. That, that's not my idea of everyone playing in the sandbox well together. 
if the money's come, if the money to front the difference is coming from free cash or stabilization, then it will be the select board and finance committees. You're right. It will be the select board and finance committees. And, and I guess my point is that, that. That, is that the difference shouldn't necessarily just come from, from those scenarios, that maybe some of it should come from the district. Uh, and that the then the water department would be would be comfortable with with some kind of deferred payment for those for those families. I, I don't know how it would work all all financially, but I just think everyone has to be willing to 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 do something to help these people because if we can't figure this out for for a few small numbers of families during an economic and health pack pandemic, then shame on us. And I bet there are a lot of people in the district which, which, that would embrace that whole, whole, wholeheartedly. You know, we all know the, the families in the district. I don't think you get a lot of pushback from the district. As long as they see that everyone's, everyone's playing ball. Can you set up a meeting, Brian, of the, of the four families? And I use that euphemistically. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, possibly. It's going to get pretty busy for the, for the, I mean, the finance committee is going to be meeting anyway, so. Right. Well, this is, and, and again, this is a, this, this is going to impact finance committee discussions in terms of the budget. Uh, so my suggestion is that we, we just include this when, when they talk about the water budget and things like that. When we have folk, when we have folks there, anyways. Okay. I mean, we should have anybody. Uh, in theory, we're gonna have everybody in the same room anyway. Well, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, the district wouldn't have to be, but 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 we would encourage yep. them to certainly join us. Right. And whenever that meeting is, when we're talking about that, it would make sense to include this as an agenda item. And that's certainly in March, so it's not too far off. Yeah. So let, let's let's keep going here. Um, so procurement and contracting, that's something that, that we'll take care of. Um, construction, so, I mean, what, what's, our, what's our timing on this? Well, until, until we get the pump skid in the location at a inlet and outlet, there's not a whole lot we can do. Okay. As far as, as far as construction, maybe we're looking at uh, two days to run the pipes in. Once the pipes are in and risen up above the pad, you know, the floor level of the pump house, uh, it's a matter of digging the foundation, pouring the foundation. You know, it's not a big building. Right. So, so let me go back for a second. What's our projected timing on this then? I mean, I, I'm trying to get an answer for Keith so that it's not, hey, tomorrow, can you guys come do this? Well, you'd probably be able to answer that one. Say, say Berkshire and say Lucy has the skid unit or double skid unit, whatever you want to call it now, ready to go out the bid, say, next Wednesday. That's optimistic, yeah. All right, I'm with you. Well, well I'm just saying, I don't – then. Because I know, can it go out? When can it go out? You know what I mean? Say it's ready for next Wednesday. Can it go out the bids Thursday, or is it going to wait to the following Thursday and then be out there um, for two weeks? You know what I'm it, saying? Yep. Yeah. So, so it, it'll be advertised in the Central Register, and that's that's put out weekly now. So, so that would be Tuesday or Wednesday. Thursday? Wednesday. Yeah. Right, so it probably. So if she was ready next Wednesday, it wouldn't make it in for next Wednesday. You'd have to wait another to the following Wednesday, maybe. Yeah, you submit it. It gets it gets posted next week, following week. Right. Gets published the following week. So usually you figure once she once she's ready, say three weeks after that, or four weeks. And then you need to get specs, right? Specs. 
right? That's essentially what you need. Yeah, we we need to know what we need to know what skid unit is coming. So that puts us. Let's say that puts us beginning of March, optimistically. I'd say that's probably early. What to get the specs on the skid unit? Yeah, I would say that's early. No, it's already the end of February, ain't it? Oh, I'm sorry, March, April. I mean, <laughs> that that sounds more. That gives us a good five weeks. So you guys wouldn't be looking for anything from Keith's guys until middle of April. The only thing we could get from Keith now is to go up and kind of clear away the trees and that. But other than that, no. Okay, but don't do that yet. We don't have the easement. Yep. <laughs> yeah. I don't I think. Mean, I would... Basically, as I'm hearing it, you know, I'm by the time we have roughly have the Lucy finished the paperwork, Abbott go out to bid. Now you're at a month. If it's looking at um, three months roughly to be built, you're you're looking at July, August, anyways, which which is sort of what I just you know, I just need a sort of plan on that time frame. I realize that it's um, not going to be um, two months worth of work, but it's going to be, you know, scattered out amongst probably two months worth of work doing the site work and stuff. And, and I just, you know, wanted to more or less know what, what involvement is expected from the town. I've already had, you know, I know there's people out there that are going to be questioning the involvement of the town and the aspect that it's really, you know, that's where the, the politics come into play in regards to how much the town is should be doing towards this work, seeing that it's the district and the enterprise fund that are benefiting, you know, that are merging. Um, and so I just want those, that kind of stuff all, all ironed out beforehand. Um, you know, are we, when it comes to actually building the building, how much, other than I know I've talked with Wayne, I know we're looking at contractors for doing like the electrical work, things of that nature. Are our, our, our town employees, are we going to swing hammers? You know, No, absolutely not. Okay, so you're going to have a contractor building the building? Well, right now we're hoping that we can, between the water commissioners and possibly a local contractor, build a building ourselves to try to keep the costs down. Which I, I totally, I'm, I'm there with you. I agree with you there. I just didn't know what, you know, again, you know, what's expected of my, my employees through this process other than the site work and doing, you know, like helping working with Wayne, like we already did putting pipe in the ground, which is, which basically right. that basically that's it running the pipes you know digging the foundation backfilling and that and if we can work with you we will okay you know <clears throat> the other side of the coin is you know how is the the um the, the use of our equipment and and our labor going towards this project is that is that being you know in kind towards the the hookups that the town has, or is the town still having to front the the four or five hookups that we have? How is all that being worked out? That was no, the town don't pay anything. And so again, that's what I'm saying. That needs to be somebody needs to have prepared a statement, I guess is what I'm saying, because I know in my own mind there's going to be people out there right. asking the questions. Why is I get it. Why? and so I just I just feel we need to be prepared and not not be scrambling for the answer when the questions are asked. That's all. Yeah, part of the town share was doing part of the fire protection. You know, putting the extra pumps in the house in the building and that, and putting in some extra hydrants for fire protection. And I think that was the town's responsibility. That's how we got the where we are now. And I, I'm right there with you. I just feel that we should have almost maybe a written or something Agreement. already formalized so that when, if, if this gets on town meeting floor and, and if people are asking questions, 
we have a good response. I'm sure something could get said at town meeting, but you know, why the town is involved with equipment. Well, I, you know, that, 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 that question can, can happen in any number of different scenarios. I mean, I'm sure there are people in town and Keith will attest to this that wonder why our town equipment is um, being used to, to fix the culvert on the, on the, um, on the, on the plot of land that, that we talked about. What, what is it, Keith, down by Tom Litwin's house? Waitley Woods project. Waitley Woods. I, I'm sure of that. Why is town why why is why is town equipment being used to 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 repair or or to to move a culvert on on private land? Well, we as a town decided that it was in the best interest of the town overall to to use that equipment because we're a, a shared community experience. You know, it's it's there. But you remember George. Thirty years ago, whenever it was, there were people saying, "Why why is the whole town helping out West?" Um, East Whaley. Yeah, I counted all the votes at that meeting. Yeah. We we won just by a few votes. By but a few votes. So anyone when you look at the over when you look at the overall project of the water department, it benefited the town a lot. It, exactly. And that's the argument that that I would use with Waitley Woods. And that's the argument I do use with Waitley Woods. It's the argument that I I have, am now, and will use when it comes to this project, this benefits the entire town. If we wanna really cannibalize each other and say, well, no, what happens in East Waitley is different than Center Waitley or West Waitley or you know, my house versus my next door neighbor, well, then geez, count me out. We're a, we're a community. And I'm, I'm happy to have that conversation with anybody in town because it's a pendulum. What's being with what's benefiting one section of town or one segment of the population one day, it's going to be some other section of town or a segment of the population another day. Yeah, if we didn't build do a water department, you would never have the tax base that the town has right now. Well, I would argue, George, we wouldn't have a town. Well, we'd still have a town, but it probably wouldn't be in the shape that it is right now. And, and it would be a different population, and there, there would be a whole heck of a lot of differences. And it's, it's, it's the conversation that we had, you know, what was it, 10 years ago that we, that we redirected um, Mill River to protect the uh, wellhead? You know, that was the conversation. People in town were saying, well, why, why, are we, why are we doing, why are we spending all this money on redirecting the, to, to protect, a, protect a wellhead um, for only a segment of the population? Because if Whaley doesn't have a public water supply, our property values are all going to plummet. And those who can move out will, and those who can't move out will stay, and they'll be left with nothing because there won't be any water. And 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 Paul Florio was great about, about talking that up across town. Yeah, he was the leader. Exactly. So, you know, give out my number. I don't care. Have them call me, and they can complain to me. Well, I, again, I just feel it's a, it's a great idea that we all work together and certainly <clears throat> knowing that my contribution from the highway department is going to keep the cost down drastically because you're not going to have a contractor in there making a profit and having to pay for failing wages. So it's, it's a win-win and I just feel we just need to have somebody prepared to have make that statement, whether it's on town meeting floor or in a finance committee meeting as to why the highway department is getting involved in it. That's all I just can sort of cover. Keith, I'm happy to do that on in a, at a joint finance select like board meeting and on town meeting. I, I'm, I'm happy to. And I think it should happen proactively rather than in response to a question. Because then you True. then hopefully we kill the question. True. So Anything else? Because I've got a 10 o'clock stop, you guys. Brian? I think we're uh, all set. The big thing is to, yeah, when Lucy know. gets it back from the DEP, then we'll kind of build a schedule on that. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're right. Okay, you guys. Just better timing. 
I'll get off my my uh, my my soapbox now. <laughs> All right, you guys. See you. Everybody later. See you guys.